Hello, parents. This is Anne Arundel County Public Schools, and you're listening to the Maryland Crabs Podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. It's Thursday. It's the Maryland Crabs. We're back. We're together. We've been together a while lately. Yeah, that's I mean, true. We've been. That's right. We were together last week for that. Before you screwed up that episode about East Porter Rocket. I right? totally didn't screw that up. That was. <laughs> <laughs> we worked so just so everyone knows this week was supposed to be East Porter Rockin we had Jess Packler on and if you don't have plans for the 23rd Saturday the 23rd go to eastporterrockin.com buy tickets but we will have something about East Porter Rockin coming yes, up for next week cake, right or or a full episode next week we've got to just get together but it's a nightmare it scenario where at 11 p.m. I'm texting John going all right this thing's hosed and he's yelling at me and I'm trying to fix it but it just was a computer error it was just uh, the program was corrupt and so I had to timidly text Jess, I'm like, hey, how you doing, Jess? How's your day going? Good, good. Going to the caps. <laughs> hey, by the way, so we will have something about East Porter Rockin', but like John said, go to their website and look at the lineup they have, which is actually really impressive. It looks like a great time. It does. It does. So, And it's always a, it's a great, the best local chill festival, best money you can spend for East Port. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it's the most obvious of all of our festivals, except for maybe the Tug. I think that that's a big one when you talk about local festivals. Mm-hmm. I think it's Tug than East Port Rockin'. Yeah, the Tug's not really a festival though. I mean, no. it's, it's you know. I've never gone to that. No, no, you loser. It's early on a Saturday. You're like a like a Anne Arundel Countyan. You're not, <laughs> you're not Nana Pollen. I am such a stepchild of everything. I don't live in the city limits. I live just outside, but I live in a part of the county that's separated from the rest of the county by the city. So we don't belong to anybody. You're an orphan, sort of. Okay. Yeah, but it was little, uh, little orphan Timmy. Now, we were not together for the Maryland Hall interview, which you did. No, which was fun. And actually, that was Maryland Hall, man. That is such a great resource that we have here. It really is. I, I like it. And it, it was great to talk to Margaret and find out, you know, what she, what her ideas are going forward. And, you know, I mean, Linnell Bowen put this huge foundation for her. And, I mean, you know, Linnell built it from nothing. Yep. Uh, into what into what it is, and no offense to Linnell, but she wanted to rela- relax. And well, she, you can she lived there. Yeah. You know what's funny about Linnell? It used to be in my previous life the job I had, and people don't tell you about this when you work for local companies or restaurants or retail or whatever it is, is that you get bombarded with uh, donation requests from like schools and sure. nonprofits. I would get you know fifty fifty a day, literally. Right. And you can't do everything for everybody, and you try to. But Linnell would call me, and she would say, I need this, and you will deliver it, and here's what I want. And she was sweet. I mean, I'm just like, all right. Um, <laughs> be there. Let me get a truck, and I'll get it out there. <laughs> you don't say no to Lunell. Yeah, no, no. So, I mean, it's exciting what they're doing, the expansion they're doing for the uh, additional wing. They're going to get underway to finish up the main theater. The Black Box Theater, too. Right? Well, they're doing the Black Box Theater in the basement, which is the Bowen Theater, which is, you know, it's it's just going to be My brother explained that venue. to me, the Black Box Theater, because he's, he's a playwright up in New York, mm-hmm. and he's written some great plays. As a matter of fact, right now, he's in Toronto. He's got his play up there about 9-11. It's fantastic. But he explained to me that a Black Box Theater is essentially, I think it's like 99 seats or something like that. It's a is specific it a number. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, apparently, you know, Black Box Theater, Off-Broadway, and Broadway, they all mean... S- different things and a black Based box on capacity theater. or yeah so there's some theater nerd out there right who's yelling at their iphone but i think it's 99 seats in a black box theater interesting but no i mean it's very flexible i mean you were saying that you know we could do films in there or you could do play in there you could do a musical performance in there a small musical performance it's very very flexible space and uh just the way they can move things in and out on three levels now which is just well you saw that mystery for me because my daughter's school's right there and whenever i pick her up there's that on the third floor, there's those doors that are the elevator doors that go into nothing. And right, was, you look at look out and you go, man, some contractor is going to get there. Yeah, I'm kicked. like, is there another part of the building they're built and they haven't started it yet? And I just I couldn't figure it out, but I was too lazy to research it. Yeah, that that's essentially if there's a large set piece that needs to come in, they can use actually a crane off of the back of a truck to lift it up and put it in there. We were actually talking about this when we were talking to uh, the folks at East Port of Rockin and Jess, and we were just saying that how we do have a lot of these things in town from theater. You know, we have we have several theaters that a lot of people aren't aware of, and they don't take advantage of. It's too bad. We have an opera company here in town that's a top rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have. If you like opera, I do like opera. I know I you do. Yeah, I'm a big fan. 
Uh, ballet, I like ballet too. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of that stuff that you don't really. I mean, you still want to go to Baltimore, Washington, but we have a lot of it right here that people just don't take advantage of. And it's and it's not it's not high school stuff. I mean, no. it's not it's not amateurs. It's uh, I mean, summer we, theater has got some great stuff. They do three plays a summer, and they're really good. They're doing bullets over Broadway right now. Right, it's Napa really Summer good. Garden Theater. So go there too. How's your mindfulness working out? So. It's none of Have your you business. Have you bitten your kid's head off lately? So, John, we had, I did a crab cake, uh, released it a few days ago on Monday, and it was... It was I, Lauren, right? Right. And she is an author of The Mindfulness Journey. I'm sorry, Lauren, I can't remember that right offhand. The national, new National Geographic but it was, book. Yeah, it was by National Geographic. It's about mindfulness. And John sent me the email. And he's like, yeah, I really think you need to handle this, and you really need this, because I am a little bit tightly wound, just a bit. <laughs> And so I made a deal with uh, Lauren, Lauren, that uh, I was going to try this out, and then I was going to, we're going to touch base, and I'm going to do that because okay. I actually tried it for the first day, and then just I can't be alone with my thoughts. It's just okay. not good. I'm gonna, I'm, but I'm gonna try. We'll check back. But in the meantime, go listen to that crab cake. That was actually very interesting. She was lovely. She was it. great. Yeah. It was, it was a lot. It was a fun one. Um, I can't tell you the number of people who texted me after that, and yeah. a bunch of people, and said, "Yeah, you really need this." And, and at <laughs> good, first, good. I'm like, "Oh, thanks." And after like the fifth person I was getting defensive, I'm like, "You know what? Screw you." And they're like, "Say, you really need this." It's <laughs> fail. And uh, and another good thing, I listened to Scott McMullen had a new podcast episode out. Oh, I didn't, I didn't and, listen to it. And yet. he turned the tables. He had Ray. Hoffman, oh, good for interviewing him, and it was all about his life on the campaign trail. Huh? And they've done that before, though, haven't they? No, not on. Well, they've no, they've no. He the, did Josh Davis. Josh Davis. Yeah, that's right. But it was, uh, it was, it was interesting, and in how how he did it, and he was talking about you know stuff he didn't know and what he wants to do and everything else if he's elected to the District Six Councilman. And one thing that just absolutely stunned me as he was walking in the neighborhood with a guy that's running for clerk of the courts, knocking on doors, and somebody was like, well, no soliciting. He says, well, we're not soliciting. We're doing, you know, political stuff. And they found out he was a Democrat, and this guy spit on him. Did he really? I'm like, whoa, dude, man, that's hardcore. That's where we are right now in this country. It's, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, unbelievable. I mean, I feel bad for Scott that had to do it. I mean, I think it's kind of cool that he sort of threw that out there. That's, that's the crap that some of these... Uh, politicians are going through or he, politician wannabes i guess he's a wannabe I think it's everybody at this point. it's just we're also for for no good reason we're just also polarized and there's just not reason i always said that i think i've told this before but we i had neighbors who were a couple doors down from me and they were just bleeding heart liberals and then a couple doors the other way they were just diehard conservatives and they got to the point that they couldn't go to parties together just because they just despised what each other stood for and they lived the exact same lives. Their kids went to private schools. They drove the same cars. They made the same amount of money. They mowed their lawns. Like just, everything in their lives were the exact same. But except they for how they voted. Except they couldn't be in their same room together. That's crazy. Well, if you want to be in the same room together with a bunch of politicians, you had plenty of opportunity last night um, because we, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we dumped 20, what, two or three I think, I think it was like, yeah, I lost, I lost count. You were a busy, busy, busy boy. But we, again, um, yeah, what we did is we picked out several races. He's using the word we, well, we like did. the royal we. We did. We picked out several races that were interesting to us. And people asked us, well, how did you pick that? And why didn't you pick this? And because it's our damn podcast and we can do whatever the hell we want. Yeah. Mindfulness. There, there you go. You could use it. Um, yeah. It's, it's it's peaceful. But no, we picked out several interesting races uh, that we thought would be, maybe they were competitive. Maybe they were controversial. Maybe they were people that were involved that we knew personally that we liked mm-hmm. or that we didn't that'll give scott some food for thought there for yeah, he's gonna text me 15 times today thank you but yeah if you're if you're interested in finding out what the candidates are all about give them a listen to find your candidate that you would like to know a little bit let's about. give him a little more information so what, what john did is that that he picked the races and he sent out an email to everyone who's running yeah and, and, and what, what what it is that we figured we couldn't do the debates like we did with annapolis because just so many races and so many candidates and i mean there's a, some candidates that have seven people running uh, so what we did is we said, let's just give them the floor and said, hey, why do I vote for you? And that was the question. And they had up to 10 minutes. And at the end of 10 minutes, we hung up on them. And I got some sense of satisfaction hanging up on a couple of them. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was it was very interesting. Most of them were a little bit shorter than that. Others went pretty close to the 10 minutes. But they could, you know, either they could diss the people that are currently in office. They could say what they want to do, their backgrounds. It was their 10 minutes to use as they saw fit. As, as they wanted. Nobody sang. Nobody told jokes. It would have been more entertaining. Yeah, I'd like to see, I was waiting for someone to be kind of outside of the normal, you know, realm and just kind of do something crazy. Didn't happen. We gotta get Bobcat Goldthwait. I love Bobcat Goldthwait. I'm a big fan. We need to get him. We need to get him to run as a candidate. Wouldn't He's that a be brilliant awesome? guy too. Yeah, he really is. He's a great comic. 
so the people who responded, some people didn't respond. Right, right. Um, and, and, we, and if you go to the MarylandCrabs.com or you go to Ion Annapolis, we're going to have posts with, we'll have all of the um, interviews all in one single post. And we totally call out those that were non-responsive. And for those that are non-responsive, I encourage the people that are listening just to take that for what it's worth. Why wouldn't they want to talk and tout their own horn? I don't know. You figure that out. And there were a couple of people that actually we had scheduling conflicts and I will update them. Mm-hmm. They said, okay, yeah, let's get together. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. And it just hadn't happened yet, but it probably will after we release them. And I will update them. But I did note them on there too as well. Yeah, so it was. So it's very informative. So you can get in there and you can pick the people that you want. And if you subscribe to us, of course, your, your phone is filled with them right now. So go to your app and you'll, you'll see them just stacked up there. But, uh, you know, go outside of your comfort zone. And if you already know who you're going to vote for, listen to their their opponent and see what they have to say. I, where I get tired, because, you know, we do a lot of this, is that you hear a lot of the same platitudes. You hear a lot of the same stuff put out there saying, you know, I'm for the schools, I'm for the environment, I'm for, you know, fiscal responsibility and all these things. And after a while, I want to say, all right, I want to hear specifics. I want to hear some, this is what people have been promising for a long time. Let's hear something that's new. And, you know, that's where I would challenge people. So if you have someone in mind that you're going to vote for, do yourself a favor, go listen to their opponent and just see what they have to say. Right. Oh, and one super important thing here is there was no editing on them. Nope. I turned around, I gave him a question. I said, hey, why do I vote for you? And I started a 10 minute timer and that was it. And actually, uh, in some times you might even hear the timer go out. You hear beep, 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 or something like that. But it's, uh, yeah, no, there was no editing there. And I kept telling them, I said, if they got into a coughing fit or something like that, I would take that out. But there, nobody did, and it, there was no editing. So it is what it is. And when they struggle, when they struggle, when there's pauses, there's pauses. Yeah, and actually, we should point that out, too, is that, you know, we do do a lot of editing on these, is that, you know, take out the ums and the pauses, and sometimes we'll hear noise, we'll take that out. And I just stuttered, and I just took that out, but you didn't hear it because I just edited that. <laughs> but uh, whenever we interview anyone who's running for office ever, we don't touch a bit of it because if there's an awkward pause or if there's a long pause or someone stutters or stammers, We leave that in there because we don't think it would be fair. And not just in the ones that John just did, but in general, whenever we have anyone in here and we're we're talking to them, we don't edit that at all because we just don't think that would be a fair representation of the moment that they were in. Well, I'll tell you what, let's get into this week's episode. Uh, We've yacked enough a little bit, but this one's kind of interesting. This is uh, about jeweling. And when I first heard about it, I'm like, drooling? (laughs) I do that occasionally. But jeweling, J-U-U-L-I-N-G, it's a new... The kids are doing it. It's a new, I don't want to say a get high type of a thing, but it's a supercharged nicotine buzz that they're doing as young as middle school and maybe even even younger. Yeah, a lot of the kids at my, my kids' schools are getting nailed for this. But the thing is, it's almost obscure enough that you can disguise it. It looks like a USB flash drive. That, in fact, is how you charge it. And you sit there and you can smoke it. The smoke can be smokeless. It can be scentless. It's almost like a vape pen, sort of, but not really. Holds as much nicotine as a whole pack of cigarettes. And you can put, and each little insert will have 200 hits. Hmm. You can actually put other stuff in it, too. So they can smoke weed out of it, too. So we went over to Anne Arundel Medical Center, and we talked to a thoracic surgeon. It was Dr. Catania, and we went up into their studio up on the fifth floor of the Donner Pavilion, Hmm. question mark. I think so. I think it was the Donner Pavilion. I get all the pavilions confused. The Blitzen Pavilion. And the Rudolph. Yes. But it's an up and coming. I don't want to make that sound like it's an exciting thing, but it's it's something that we need to look out for. If your parents of elementary school kids and middle school kids and high school kids, that's where you need to look out for it. Uh, once it gets out of high school or college, it's pretty much very infrequent. So, um, But let's talk to um, Dr. Catano and um, we'll be back right after it. Grab a smoke. Hi, I'm Scott McMullen, and I'm running for county council in District 6 because I was born and raised here, and I want to make a positive difference. I'll fight for our beautiful bay to fully fund our schools and to make our community safe. I'll fight for long-term thinking in planning and for broad and diverse economic opportunity. I'll make sure your voice is the most important on the county council. Early primary voting starts June 14th, and the primary day is the 26th. Consider voting for me, Scott McMullen, your hometown option for County Council District 6. Paid for by Gormley Jericho Bowman, LLC, and authorized by Friends of Scott McMullen. Do you know what your teens are doing this summer? Don't be afraid to ask. The most recent Maryland Safe and Supportive School Survey shows three quarters of Annapolis High School students say it was fairly or very easy for students in their grade to get alcohol. Underage and binge drinking is very real Annapolis. 
If you give them access to alcohol, you're not cool, but you are liable for the outcome. Create a safe environment for your teens and their friends this summer. If they need to talk, listen. If you need to talk, we'll listen. We're here for you and your children. We're ASAP, Annapolis Substance Abuse Prevention. ASAP facilitates healthy community change, prevents and reduces binge drinking, underage drinking, and alcohol-related auto crashes among youth and young adults through locally-led collaborations and evidence-based prevention strategies. Visit us at PreventSubstanceAbuse.org. This message is supported by SAMHSA and the Maryland Behavioral Health Administration. We are here up on the fifth floor, I think, of Anne Arundel Medical Center in the Belcher Pavilion with Dr. Stephen Catania, who is a thoracic surgeon here. And we're going to be talking about something that I had no idea existed until about two weeks ago called juuling. And uh, it's not a bedazzle. It's not something that you see on late night TV. It's not something that you can uh, do on your clothes. And it's something that's very concerning both to the school districts as well as to health professionals and law enforcement, right? Absolutely. And John, thank you for having me here. No, thank you. Well, you're having me here, but that's a... <laughs> Fair <you> know, enough. <laughs> it's your house, not mine. <laughs> uh, yeah, juuling has really taken off in the last several years. Uh, electronic cigarettes. Ju so jewels are one of the electronic cigarettes that are out there. And a lot of people have heard of vaping. Okay. And um, that's kind of the main word that we use. And vaping just means, you know, the vapor that comes off of the electronic cigarettes. So now we've made a verb out of it and we call it vaping. Um, and the electronic cigarettes have been out for decades and the stores have been popping up in the last five to ten years pretty much you can't go to a strip mall and you don't see some sort of a vaping store an electronic cigarette store sure I, and I, i'm actually surprised that they haven't been legislated yeah out but it, it, it's pretty amazing and, and a lot of the electronic cigarette uh legislation sits kind of beneath um all of the other tobacco legislation and so the fda uh, the food and drug administration is in the process of working on more legislation for electronic cigarettes which is going to capture jewels um, which has become the hottest thing on the market Okay, so juuling is a separate thing from, I mean, there can be somebody that wants to smoke and they vape because they don't want the harmful effects of a cigarette or a cigar or a pipe or something like that. There are kids that do it to look cool. With the vaping, it is a combustible thing, correct? It, well, it's, it's, it's heated. So it's yeah, heated. It, it is combustible uh, liquids. But, but just to be clear, jewels are a type of electronic cigarette or a type of vaping device. So juuling is just vaping on a jewel, for lack of a better word. So there's phrase. no real difference between a vape pen that I would buy at a vape store and a jewel other than the appearance of it. Yeah, not really. They're very similar in how they work. Uh, you know, interestingly, when the original electronic cigarettes came out, they were sort of set up as a maybe healthier alternative, and we can come back and talk about that if you want, but maybe a healthier alternative to real cigarettes. Uh, and they made them look like cigarettes because they really made an effort that they wanted smokers to be interested in these things that looked like you were smoking a cigarette. You would inhale, the, the tip would light up. You know, you kind of got that same feeling, same weight, same sort of shape. Sure. The Juul is the flip of that. This is the electronic cigarette for today's kids that it looks like a, uh, a zip drive that you would plug in the side of your computer. The, these things are made to look like a flash drive. It's a little bit longer, but the average parent isn't going to realize that this isn't just something that you're, you're storing. Uh, so is this, ma is this made, in your opinion, to deceive? Uh, deceive's probably strong. I think it's, it's made to be much less conspicuous. And while the manufacturer goes out of their way to say, look, you know, this is for adults, it, there are clearly some advantages for younger kids who want to conceal what they're doing. Because this thing doesn't look like an electronic cigarette. Sure. It plugs into the side of your USB drive actually to recharge the device. And uh, it's being used all the time now in schools. Teachers turn their backs. You know, students are holding them under their jackets, blowing out the vapor so no one can really smell it. And they're, they're taking hits of uh, nicotine-laden cartridges. And this is something a kid can walk into, into the front door of the school with a, this USB jewel drive plugged into his computer or his laptop and nobody is more the wiser. That's right. And, and so part of the challenge is, you, you know, no longer can parents just be on the lookout for typical cigarettes or I smell it in their back room or something like that. But now these are devices that look in, in, like, like many other things that we're using on our laptops, and it's actually very harmful. Uh, just sitting on the desk, there's a, a smoking device that looks just like... Uh, yep. yep. 
I mean, there's subtle, there's subtle differences, but but it, but if a, if a parent caught a kid with this thing, they could easily put it off as, look, this is just my flash drive. You know, it's not that obvious. So what what goes in it? What is the the harmful? Well, so that is still being worked out. To be fair, so basically the way a jewel works um, is it has a, uh, a heating element that and then a vapor cartridge that attaches to the end of it. And and interestingly, although the company doesn't market to it to kids and, and young adults, the flavors that are sold in the in the pack <laughs> come as creme brulee, fruit punch, uh, cool mint, and then one called Virginia tobacco, which is supposed to replicate the you know the taste of regular tobacco. So uh, obviously some of the popularity, and then they have occasional other flavors like mango, etc. So clearly these are flavors that are interesting to teens and young adults. And the item that's in the jewel. That's a just a high dose of nicotine. Is that what? Yeah. So one of the components of the jewel is nicotine, and these these cartridges that plug into the end of the device uh, supposedly last about 200 uh, hits or puffs, and the nicotine in one of those cartridges is the equivalent of a pack of cigarettes. And, and, so this is like the carfentanil of uh, of the heroin set, yeah. if you will. I mean, you've got a, a, a super dose of nicotine. And, and and part of the problem, you know, again is nicotine is exceptionally addictive and, and I've been talking to I have kids ranging from 11 to 15 and so they get to listen to me sort of pontificate about these kinds of things all the time but one of them did a project on jeweling since we started talking about it and found that nicotine is considered more addictive than cocaine and heroin and the cigarette manufacturers knew this years ago and part of the reason they got into so much trouble with the tobacco uh, legislation etc was that they were adjusting the level of nicotine in cigarettes to keep people addicted uh, to, to wanting to buy cigarettes and so nicotine is exceptionally addictive and you know it gives people a, a quick buzz or a quick high and you don't feel like you're doing anything bad that's harming your body the problem is nicotine does have uh, developmental effects on the growing brain and unfortunately you know even though our teenagers think they know everything and that they're fully mature their but brains they <laughs> and maybe they do but their, their brains are not completely mature until they're in their 20s and so they're getting the harmful effects of nicotine which is going to affect potentially their their future personalities and behaviors etc but they're completely unaware and they think they're just doing something that's cool but not realizing that there are significant health consequences now is it is strictly with Julian strictly nicotine is well, that, is that or, I mean, or is this is are they modifying these? Well, there's there's other chemicals. All electronic cigarettes are currently being evaluated by the FDA. There's been no final decision as to how harmful. You know, you brought up earlier. You know, a, a safer alternative to cigarette smoking, maybe, but we don't actually know the answer to that. Uh, and, and we won't for years, I'm sure. We, we won't. We won't. We hope to hear something in the next couple of years, but it'll be at least that long. But if you think about it, you're inhaling something into your lungs that has you know that has chemicals that you're burning and there are often cancer-causing or carcinogen uh, substances that are in these devices, just like regular cigarettes, and we just don't know the long-term implications. Do you feel that there's any use for a jewel it, that's not nefarious? Yeah, so there may be some benefits. Um, some smokers have used not just jewels but any electronic cigarettes and felt that it helped him or her quit smoking. Okay. And, 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 and we think electronic cigarettes are safer. I keep saying think because we really don't know for sure. The jury's still out on how much safer, if at all, these things are. But probably it's better than the regular combustible typical cigarettes that people smoke. With, with, with burning and Yeah, exactly. Smoking. So, so maybe. But um, so th there's probably a role for these devices to help smokers potentially find a way to quit. Um, you know, smokers try many different methods and there's different things for each person. And so maybe electronic cigarettes and jewels fit into that. So there may be some benefit. I know, I know my mother quit and she had to carry on a toy cigarette for many years after yeah. she quit cold turkey. I've heard people with rubber bands snapping on when they feel the urge to smoke on their wrist to do that for nail biting and whatnot. So uh, the jury's still out on it. So we've got a jury's still out. And that's part of what the FDA is trying to figure out is, you know, how can we make maybe keep these devices around in case there's benefit for smokers, but by no means should people be picking these things up and, and call it a safe alternative to cigarettes. To smoking. smoking. Now, as a thoracic surgeon, is this causing damage to the throat by using this, or is this just a, a nicotine issue that is, I mean, nicotine primarily would affect the brains and... and yeah, and nicotine can affect small blood vessels and other things as well. Um, so... The short answer is yes. You know, again, you're inhaling other compounds, not just the nicotine. Um, uh, diacetyl is another compound that's in uh, electronic cigarettes, including Juul's. It is um, 
it, it causes what's called uh, popcorn lung. And it's it, the reason that where that comes from is it was an additive used by the popcorn industry, and they were finding a lot of their workers were showing up with these awful lung diseases. And um, so that is one of the chemicals that's been found in some of these electronic devices. So, yes, throat, lung, you know, you're exposing by inhaling these heated substances, you're exposing everything from the throat on down to potential harmful chemicals that can affect your uh, your breathing down the road. Maybe it's going to cause cancer down the road. Again, we don't know the answers to all of that. How prevalent is it? At this point, I mean, I mean, this is something that I, I hadn't heard of, like I say, a couple of weeks ago. Sure. I mean, is this something that's running rampant? Is it potentially set to run rampant? Are we ahead of it, behind it? Where are we? So we're definitely behind it. Cigarette use, so true cigarette use, we've made a lot of progress in the last couple of decades. And maybe 9 to 10% of teenagers and young adults were using cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes five years ago, estimates were about 1%. Now we're up to almost 20% have at least tried an electronic cigarette, including a Juul. Um, and so that's one out of five kids who's running around in high school is potentially either using this regularly or has at least tried it and has the uh, potential of becoming addicted to it. Where do you now, buy them? Well, so again, you can buy them online through the company who they, you know, they, they make a lot of efforts, again, to not sell under 21. The state with, of Maryland. With that, with that button that says, I certify I'm 21 yeah, or more. Yeah, exactly. That, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, but part of the problem, and we've, uh, we've been involved with legislation that's been introduced to the Maryland uh, State and House to try and increase the tobacco and other uh, device age to 21, is because if there is a, so it's legal to buy them at 18 in the state of Maryland. Any electronic cigarette, right. including Jules. I just found out actually that you know another major uh, gas station chain just started carrying them in Maryland, and so a high school senior, and this is happening all over the place, will go they're in. They're eighteen. They're eighteen. They'll go in. They'll, they'll buy the device, and there's a heck of a market for them actually, a black market for them at schools, and they're selling them to younger kids. To the freshmen. Well, it's no different than the somebody selling pot to a kid in the school either. Yeah. But so the, the devices themselves are being sold, and you said a major gas station. Can I buy them in a vape store? Uh, some, I, I think some vape stores do carry them and uh, online and now, you know, now gas stations too. And then the insert, the, the nicotine, the, the, the buzz, whatever it is, that's a cartridge mm -hmm. that goes in that. And that is also purchasable at vape stores, the gas stations and whatnot. It's sort of like a... Uh, it's like a replacement cartridge. So, so you, you, you run out of the, uh, the liquid substance with the nicotine, et cetera, and after 200 puffs and you just have to change the cartridge. Okay, and that cartridge you said lasts for 200 puffs, and then you just need a new one there, and you can recharge the, the heating element of it through your through your laptop. So yep. as you're, you plug it into the USB drive. So as you're listening to your teacher lecture on about some war of some long ago, you're charging your next little your little hit there. Yep. Have you seen a, a medical issue with? I mean, are are students presenting them? Are young people presenting themselves to your practice, to the hospital, the emergency room, with anything that is? On that, I mean, I, I, know, I know obviously with heroin and whatnot, we've got overdoses and sure. um, alcohol poisoning and everything else. Is there something immediate that is an effect on anybody? So, not that I'm aware of, because the the effects are not really that immediate. I don't believe. You know, it's going to be a more of a drawn out thing, and I think that's part of the harmful effects. Is you you don't immediately feel sick, or you don't immediately you know have to get, run into the emergency room because you've got some sort of poisoning. And so it's more subtle, I think, and they're, and they're more long-term effects. There have been reports, though, going back, again, getting a little bit away from jeweling, uh, to refillable electronic cigarettes where you buy a canister of the liquid to refill the cigarettes. There have been reports of uh, poisoning from those because you get such a, a nicotine overdose with that. Uh, animals, for example, have gotten into those things, and that has caused deaths and other problems in animals uh, because of the poisoning. Interesting. Now, can the canisters can the cartridges that, that you've got can they be changed with anything uh, more nefarious um, I, I mean I've heard I've heard again with the vaping that, that you can throw you know some weed in there and everything else and and you know smoke marijuana relatively obscurely if you will right now same um, same with jewels and other electronic cigarettes yeah you're able to sort of uh, you know mess around with the cartridges and put in other additives and make your own mixture yeah best way for a parent to keep aware of this well, you know, like everything else, we need to really keep an eye on our kids. We need to know what they're what they're doing. Yeah, I, I, I've been a proponent of that. You know, know, know your kids' friends, know what they're doing, and sure. everything else. Don't be overbearing. But uh, so, I mean, there's is there any behavior issues that present themselves or anything? N not really. Other than 
a lot of electronic cigarette use can lead to regular cigarette use as well. And so, you know, that's a little bit more obvious. But I think the more important thing is for parents to be, and grandparents and, and others, to be aware that these things even exist. And so if you see something that kind of looks like a flash drive but doesn't make a lot of sense or your kid's doing something that you're a little bit concerned about, it you know, looks like he or she might be smoking or doing something with this device. You just need to know what's out there. I think part of it is, is a lot of us parents don't even know that these things exist. What's, who's the, is there one manufacturer of this or are there several? Is there any way to definitively identify if I'm throwing a flash drive down on my desk in a jewel? Is there a way to um, identify the two other than smoking it? Yeah, I mean, there are subtle differences. It's longer. It's got this clear cartridge on the end. I think if you, if, if the device is clearly, uh, you know, is carefully examined, you can tell that it isn't quite this, the typical flash drive. And is there just one manufacturer? There's just one time? manufacturer. What's time. the name of the manufacturer? Uh, Juul, J-U-U-L. So they're making themselves a verb. They are. <laughs> they, they are. They've, they've gotten their own verb out of this. The schools are finally catching on, thank goodness, because um, even in my children's high schools and grade schools, they have been passing rules for the students that if they're caught using these devices, um, you know, they have escalating punishments from suspensions to potential expulsions. So, Which is one more thing, and certainly in the public schools, that's one more uh, thing that the resource officers and the guidance counselors and the teachers obviously need to keep an eye out for. I remember when my kids were younger and we didn't quite have, have this, the teacher said, yeah, I, I can always tell when you're texting in class because nobody looks down at their crotch and smiles. <laughs> you know, it's right, like, right. okay, well, give me your phone. It's like, <laughs> you know, we're not quite as subtle as we think. And I'm sure the kids yeah. today, as they're jeweling, are probably not as well. Something to be concerned about, certainly for parents, for caregivers, for teachers. Looks like a thing. And we're going to you know, put some links to uh, fixtures and whatnot in this podcast so you can Perfect. see what they look like and keep an eye out. I mean, it's it's a problem. You think it's going to get worse? I do. I do. I think, you know, again, it's it's become cool to to jewel. Um, and so... Sounds like a PSA. It's like <laughs> it might be on a Saturday morning commercial. Yeah, you know? no, exactly. Uh, yeah. And, and and unfortunately, it's, it's really taken hold in the schools. And... Um, Really trying to get trying to get a young kid to understand that hey this might feel good right now but boy this has got some long term consequences that's hard I mean it's like everything else it, 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 when you're young you, you really you're indestructible and you don't realize the long term implications and so it's it's a conversation you need to be having though. well one one thing actually I just thought about this is is this restricted to young children I'm going to say the under eighteen set or the eighteen and under set for the most part do you think well. It's gained a lot of popularity there, but it's also in college campuses. Uh, jewels are very popular now as well. So it, it's not strictly just the grade school, high school. Um, so probably not so much in the young adult that's maybe out of college, just starting their career or whatnot. I mean, at that point, I guess they can drink and smoke and whatever they want to do on their own without having to be a little sneaky about it. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, Dr. Stephen Catania, thoracic surgeon at Anne Arundel Medical Center here in Annapolis. Thank you for, you know, I don't know why I say thank you for turning me on to this, <laughs> onto this but certainly thank Thank you for uh, letting us know what, you know, another thing that we need to look out for as parents here. And Juuling, J-U-U-L-I-N-G, looks like a funky flash drive. Beware. Thank you. Did you ever smoke? No. Uh, I mean, I've tried a couple cigarettes, uh, smoked some weed in high school and college, but um, no. I tried cocaine once, hated it. I... <laughs> I was just picturing that. Just you would powder all over your yeah. face and just freak out. Okay, okay. Funny story. My first time with a bong, I wasn't con- quite sure of the. You phys- drank it. I wasn't quite. Well, I did that on a dare once, but uh, I wasn't quite sure how it worked. And I'm looking. I'm seeing bubbles and smoke and this contraption with the tubes and everything else. And my only experience with bubbles and cylinders and everything else before was like a. a a cup with a straw so i get this thing looking like like i know what i'm doing i put it up to my mouth and i proceed to blow into it and it takes the bowl and it blows it all over the room and everyone's <laughs> like oh my cheech. god what do you do? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really embarrassing then i had to cough and pretend like oh yeah it was uh whitest guy ever oh my god i smoked for a long time i smoked for maybe 20 years something like that i was like pack pack and a half a day well the the the, the scary thing about this drooling is that we don't know what we don't know we don't know what it does what it can do we don't know how you know how long some kind of effect will take right so it's, it's definitely something to watch well, it reminds me like the 1940s when you know they're sending pregnant women home with packed cigarettes like smoke a lucky you know when i was when i was a baby i've got all sorts of pictures of me and a baby with my mother and i mean i think i came out and she grabbed a cigarette but because i don't there's no picture her holding me or doing feeding me or anything where she doesn't have a cigarette in her hand and at one point she was up to uh six packs a day wow my uh, father-in-law just passed away. He and it wasn't lung cancer, amazingly enough. But he was a three-pack a dayer. Yeah, my mom had no touch of lung cancer or anything like That's that amazing. when she died in her mid-eighties. Some, mid-80s some and people was, are like that. 
Well, she quit though, didn't she? She did. She quit when she was 60. She quit cold turkey. Oh. And she had a, for about three years, she carried a, a fake plastic cigarette. Yeah, I can see a, that. A toy thing, because it had to be something in her yeah. two fingers between her FU finger and her pointer finger. And that was always... That was the hardest thing I ever did. We, I quit when, when Kath and I got married. Uh, she, she said, we're quitting. And I'm like, all right. And I didn't agree to this, but okay. So I did the patch. Okay. And I got off six smoking, but it, I was just never really happy with it. And then she started sneaking and I caught her. So then, yeah, out of spite, I started Game smoking. On. Yeah. But then uh, I quit... Right when the kids were born, uh, I'd started again, you know, and it, for me, it was just because I was a lousy addict. It wasn't the stress. It wasn't anything. Mm-hmm. It's just, it was the nicotine. I wasn't a social smoker where people were like, you want to go out and grab a smoke? I'm like, no, I want to, I want to go up by myself and get the nicotine in my body and that's it. But that's what scares me about this so much is the nicotine delivery system is that the, the cigarette companies figured out, you know, if the smoking is now the smell and everything else, you can't smoke anywhere. Let's make this as easy as we can, and let's manipulate the nicotine oh, delivery and, system. And absolutely, and it's Dr. they're still in cities. I don't believe in it, but if there's a hell, there, there's a special place in hell for these companies. The cigarette manufacturer. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dr. Catania said there was, you know. It, they say that they're not marketing to kids. Of but, course they are. You know, but they they turn around and they've got you know the wonderful. Oh, we got bubble gum. You know, I mean the vodka company, bubble gum vodka. Yeah, you know, and they're I mean, all do. I mean, and that's I mean that's how Starbucks too. I mean Starbucks isn't coffee. Starbucks is liquid candy. Mm-hmm. That's so. I mean they're marketing to, you know, Generation Y and the millennials and and but they're marketing these kids and they're getting them early. And so I mean I can't tell you the number of kids that I see with that obnoxious cloud of you know vape kind of going out i met somebody at um city dot coffee over at bay baydale drive the other day and we were sitting at the table and there was a, a i say a kid there was a guy vaping out front and he when he would exhale so trashy just this gigantic plume of smoke and i i caught it out of the corner of it my smells eye. like vanilla well I, I couldn't smell it i was inside and he was outside but i caught it out of the corner of my eye and i'm like oh, is my car on fire <laughs> you know, oh no it's just a it's just a dude around the corner vaping i put the fear of god into my kids about this because i i told them if i have one cigarette now yeah, I would be back to smoking after, what, 15 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would be back to smoking in a second. It's that insidious. You're never free from it. So I tell them, I say, don't fool with it. Don't play with it. And they, they have a really healthy attitude about it. And not many kids do it. But they tell you stories at the bathrooms at, at their schools, you know, that sure. they've taken the doors off because... Yeah, Broad, Broadneck did that uh, yeah. with, the, with the Julian issues. Well, so. they did that when we were kids, too. I went to good counsel, and they took the, the doors off for because everyone was smoking. Where's that, in Montgomery County? It's Wheaton. It was Wheaton. <laughs> so it was not the fun part of Montgomery County. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, keep your eye out if you're a parent. Jeweling. Yeah. The latest craze that's uh, potentially more dangerous than uh, it's eating, eating Tide Pods. Yeah, I think, you know, that's another thing, too. I think that kids are just making stuff up. They're like, tell them that we're doing this now. And the media's like, oh, my God, now they're smoking puppies. They're just making <laughs> stuff up. That's true. Speaking of Julie, which sounds like Julie, which yeah. is the wife of the mayor, I'm only bringing this up because there's been some explosions on Facebook lately just with city business. I think there's been a bleed, oh. there's been a bleed over of uh, yeah. like city business and city officials and the Facebook pages. And it's almost like a brawl where like you in the movies where a fight starts out in a bar and then everyone like you know, spills out of the, street. the streets. And that's what it's like with Facebook. I'm just seeing like former well, candidate. I mean, when the city comes out with the, the plan that they did that they claim was the result of 200 people, what they all wanted to see at City Dock and it included two artificial beaches, chaise lounges, you know, fake palm trees and a boathouse and a splash park and everything else. I mean, it was no wonder. Well, I think people got inflamed. It's just, but it was funny to me. It was just, you know, you normally see this come out in like a press release and then it's in the paper and then people respond letters to the editor or even the comments. Uh, MD Veritas, you're a horrible person. Just want to say right. that. I don't want a podcast to go back without me bringing that up. He's awful. Yeah. Horrible. But uh, but you're seeing it spill out into. Then first it was Eastport Forum, and now you're just seeing like people's Facebook pages, and now all of a sudden I'm seeing city officials commenting on this. And although I have a I have someone that I know who's a PIO, I don't want to mention her name, but she's very well respected, and she actually commented on one of those, and I, I mentioned that to her the other day, and she said I don't see a problem with it. She goes, it's a it's a new era. I don't see a problem with someone putting out city policy on their Facebook page or. That's where it's I think discussed. there's a difference between whether you comment on it or whether you, you know, you get defensive and jump in the battle. It was as well. getting ugly. It was, it was getting borderline ugly. I mean, I, I call a spade a spade. You know, I'll call, I'll call him out. But I mean, Brian Callahan, who's the city's economic policy advisor, no analyst. I was trying to think what the right title is. But I mean, you know, when somebody was critical of of it, I mean, he would come back and he says, "Well, no, you're the wrong." And I mean, and I'm I'm making up the tone that I thought he yeah, was typing like my, with. You're like my wife. You're making voices for people. Um, and, you know, I think that's, I think you need to, 
as a representative of the city and a representative of the mayor, you need to be a little bit more level-headed. I think that's just my opinion. I don't know, but all right, so now I'm thinking aloud. Like, you can certainly engage on them. Think about Governor Schaefer. Governor Schaefer was very aggressive in that way. I mean, this before social media. Remember how he used to pick on Glenn Denning? Right. Uh, like openly in meetings. True. And well, I, I mean, uh, my my argument on that would be that it would be a, a different time. I mean, he was the guy that also asked a, an aide to come back in so he could look at her ass when she walked out again. Yeah, that but, part and, I and, don't and, 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 for and some I, reason. And, and, you know, it, it was a different time, but maybe we are starting to go into a different time now at this point. I don't know. Well, there's been a general, I, I don't, I'm, gonna get, I'm not going to get on my soap, soapbox, but I'm going to say there's been a general lack of civility or we've, we've regressed horribly in the last year that starts at the top and goes down, but we're all just as bad because I just see these Facebook posts where people just get nasty right off the bat. It used to be that anonymous posters, people would get nasty because they're anonymous. And, and then you would, you would comment on something and you didn't know the person on Facebook, so you'd get into it. Now I see people who know each other that are getting nasty with each other. I'd be interested to see if, like on the Aceport Neighborhood Forum, whether Jessica Packler, how many comments she's turned off post she's turned off comments on this year versus last year versus i had to take a post down because i was being funny and people got fired up I, it was still funny i don't care it was it was very funny yeah you got bitch slapped i did she was mad at me she That's... wasn't the first woman that, that and said, mad okay at me. i'll take it down yeah i'm a married guy i, I wanted to leave. i wasn't ashamed though what was it it was you woke up and said hey good morning everybody with us what are, <laughs> what are we going to be pissed off about today I said, good morning eastport what are we outraged about today <laughs> <laughs> I crack me up. I swear oh, to God, oh, I yeah. still find that funny because oh. there was like a jillion comments. <laughs> what she got? I think she Man. got a bunch of, of uh, private messages. Little, 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 little bit of a flack there. Who but, did not find me as funny as I yeah. do? But, but I mean, Ga and Gavin's got the whole tax thing. I mean, you know, it, it seems like we don't know what we're doing with the taxes. I mean, it's you know, thirteen cents. And no, it's down to nine point nine. No, it's ten point five. And I mean, it's the new city manager. I mean, and she's got the accounting background and the forensic background. It's like, hey, I found all sorts of free money, and it's oh no, but I found. The old finance guy, he hid some money and oh, we got, you know, and <laughs> it's, it's like, a coffee can. <laughs> and, and the thing that really pisses me off is that the finance committee comes back and says, hey, I think we've got a way to not make the rate as high as we expected. Bake sale? No. You know that rebricking they were going to do on Main Street? Yeah. That the mayor put on hold because he said he could find a way to do it cheaper? Yeah. They're going to pull it. What about cinder blocks? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're going. They're going to pull it. So Nothing? I mean, here, here, the mayor says that we're kicking the can down the road, and we need to address it with a tax increase. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody kind of doesn't agree with the tax increase necessarily, but they agree that we've been kicking the can down the road. And Jared Littman said that on his way out of the council, but they're doing just the same thing. I'm going to put my red Maryland hat on here. They've got to look at cutting costs. They've got to do it. I, I think it was like a few years ago where you had. I think it was uh, Alderman Finlayson, where she, Alderman woman Finlayson, mm -hmm. where she said that she would not vote for any budget that had one job Lots cut, one, one job. vote. And I'm sorry, you're, and I'm not talking necessarily job cuts. So to, to just stop with the angry texts and emails. But I'm saying there's got to be cuts we can make. There has to be. You know, I, I and, and the other thing that was amusing, the Capitol had a, had a piece in there where apparently at the end of the finance committee meeting, Alderwoman Henson, Shanika Henson, mm -hmm. called all the department heads up, which have, they've all asked for more people because why not we need more people hey you know we've got you know we've got a 20 percent tax increase that means more people and they said i want you to justify the need for more people yeah and every reasonable. and every one of them said that they were essential employees essential positions they're critical to the mission of the department and most of them were already positions that existed that just hadn't been filled right and i'm like well if they're critical, they're, they're mission critical, and they're essential to the and department, they and they haven't forever. been filled forever, they can't be that vital. Right. Well, but that's what happened with the recession. Remember the recession that every business in, in the country, they had to do more with less. And what happened is when we came out of the recession, the company said, hey, wait a minute, we've been getting along without all these people for the last eight years. Why fill those positions again? You know, I mean, yeah. they, they chew people up while doing it, but I don't, I'm not just talking about positions. There's got to be some things that we're looking at within within the city. I mean, the budget keeps going up steadily. And at some point, someone's got to say, look, we got we to tear this down and rebuild it as far as the budget goes. I, I mean, there, there's other things. You can ask You can ask the city or the, the county and the state and the federal government for some more money or some more contributions right. because of all the things they do. You can go to, and, and I'm you know, you can maybe go to the boat show and say, hey, you know, you need to cop up a little bit more money. I mean, that's a huge money maker for them. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that we need to make our budget on the back of any one specific business. And I, I don't think that's the thing. You know, maybe, maybe it's increasing a alcohol tax in the city by a penny 
I know, like I, crazy I, know I know we can't I know we can't do sales tax, but you know look look at the sin tax or something like that. Well, and I think you know, we talked about this back when Mayor Panelides had he had that grant he had for all the, the new police officers and you know the people were all worked up about crime and you know I think we had always said that I, I didn't think there was an epidemic and certainly that once you get these police officers with the grant what happens when you don't have the grant you've already bought that and how do you pay for that and so that's where we right. are now that's what the city went through that's what the county went through with the fire department I mean they had you know county executive shoe turned one down because that's great we, we, we can hire 50 firefighters right. for for two years but what happens in year three? Right. I, I mean, we might have the money. It might be, but we need to grow so, responsibly. So I think people people worked about, you know, about the tax because, of course, yeah. I mean, I think we said that about every mayor. Every mayor has inherited kind of a mess. And I would say it started with Josh. He did inherit a mess. I think a lot of it was the administration before. A lot of it was the economy. But he inherited that mess. And then, you know, it went down to Mike. And then, it, you know, now we're at Gavin. So, you know, everyone's passed this pot down the line. And, you know, so he's saying, I got to raise taxes. And then, of course, you're going to have, you know, Red Baron who said it's a tax and spend Democrat. Um, but I'm not saying that's entirely untrue. I mean, I, I think he's inherited a mess. He had some obligations that he had nothing to do with. But at the same time, I think you can say, okay, we can't control the, the fiscal mess that I have right now. But we got to look at ways to mediate it moving forward. And that is looking at where when we cut costs. And I think no one's really done that seriously. Yeah. Yeah, you know we need we need another drinking podcast with a bunch of people and talk about this. Who know what they're talking about instead of just blathering on? Yeah, yeah, day. and and talk about this stuff. I mean, we got to see if uh, we can get like former Alderman Lippman or I'll maybe get him drunk. Former Alderman Pfeiffer, get them a, get them tanked up and spilling the secrets. You were going to do that, yeah. You know what? I'm um, writing that down. Yeah. Uh, Bye. Tequila. Throw, throw, throw in one part of Sean O'Neill, two parts of <laughs> Alex Pline, and. <laughs> And 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 a Kara McKendrick just, to, you know, I don't I don't know uh, I I think it'd be kind of fun but we do have some cool stuff coming up we have a interview a brief interview with the county executive the lieutenant governor and the mayor all talking about them coming together and singing Kumbaya as they do the first annual Sailor Triathlon which is going to be on July 28th so we did talk to all three of them. And you will want to tune in on that because you will want to know who wears spandex, who wears Speedos, and who does not. speed And we also have an East Puerto Rockin' episode coming up. We're not quite sure when that's going to happen. Yeah, I got to Jess after. She took it very well, actually. So, I mean, because I okay. blamed you. So yeah. Okay, that's fine. And so we're going to reschedule that because we want to get that out there. Yeah, it, it, might, be, it might be a crab cake. It might be a full podcast. We're not absolutely sure yet. <laughs> Funny on. part, too. That was the drinking podcast because why wouldn't it be? It was like, you know, four o'clock on a, on a Sunday. Right. So we're at the Commons. And, you know, everything. the Commons is great. That's where John does work down there. That's right there on West Street. We do our podcast down there. And that's where it's a shared workspace. And John went in and he grabbed a couple beers. He got one for our guest and one for me. And he came in and, and we, we cracked open the beers. And someone came in very pleasant. He's like, hey, hey, how are you guys doing? Listen, um, they're my beers. They're my beers. They're my last ones. And I'm trying to put the bottle cap back on. I'm like, oh, sorry. He was very nice about it. but He was. I'm, I, I, I still need to go out and buy a bottle of, uh, what was it? It was Smittix Red. And I Guinness, yeah. And uh, I Guinness. I'm going to buy him a six pack of each and put them on their desk. He was like me. super nice. I felt horrible. The whole, I was distracted the whole podcast because I just because he went to go get a beer. Well, and, you you know how bad it is when somebody drinks your last beer. Yeah, it was the last <laughs> beer too. So he probably just went and go, I just want a beer. I just want to drink. And he just saw me there. And he's like, I'm not going to say anything. He's like, you know what? So he probably stormed over. And he's like, yanks the door open. He's like, hey, guys, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, so we are, we are going to get that going there. And, um, Keep the comments coming. Keep uh, sending us suggestions. We had somebody suggested talking about a uh, a local connection to a female soccer pro. Yep. So yeah, I have to call her back. But we have we've actually gotten a bunch of, of emails that come in, and John's like, "Have you contacted them?" I'm like, yeah, I've left a message. So <laughs> then I go back and make a call. So I've got like five of those I got to do. So so if you've emailed or so that's it's my fault. I'm sorry. But uh, until then, you can find us on Facebook. We have a group and we have a page. So find us there. We're at MD Crabs Podcast on Twitter. Uh, subscribe to us. Uh, that's critical. So when you go into whatever your podcast player of preference is, hit subscribe. That way you never miss a download. It comes in automatically and we're there every Thursday and they catch little crab cake. And you have dogs barking. It's great. Uh, and then you want to rate us or we want you to rate us and we want you to give us a five-star review. And if you can do a comment, please do a comment and do that for everybody. Do that for more power to you and the Annapolis podcast and the Annapolis Pintcast because it really helps all of us out. Because it helps Maryland with- Soul Force Politics, oh, yeah, Red yeah. Maryland. Red Maryland, yeah, all of them. And with, thank you again to Red Maryland for putting Maryland Podcast Month together. That was a lot of fun. And next, I'm really looking forward to next year. So that's Red Maryland. Give them the reviews. Give them the ratings. But uh, until then, just tune in. Yeah. Hey, oh. You can never say goodbye, can you? Go ahead. 
I'm trying to think what the date is. <sighs> Next podcast, we'll throw out predictions on the primary win. Oh, yeah. We have an idea on that. Yeah. Okay. We were talking about that before. Yeah. So we, we have a scientific method, semi-scientific. It's going to be scientific-y. Okay. Bye. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.